Hello, Year 5. Welcome to your maths lesson today. So yesterday we set you some maths work on reading timetables, making sure that you could look at a timetable, uh, go across, go up, locate information. Today we're going to work on that more, but we're going to extend it a little bit. So if I just move you around to my table, okay. So we'll see here I have a table which is showing me across, four different locations and down it's also showing me four different locations now this type of table is a two-way table which means that the information across and down is the same okay so for example i've got london newcastle birmingham and liverpool so in this situation they're all train stations and down i have london newcastle birmingham and liverpool as well now you'll see when I go from London to London, that it's blank, there's nothing in there, because you can't travel from London to a London station in, that, in our terms. So London to London is a blank. Newcastle to Newcastle, it's also a blank. Birmingham to Birmingham is blank, there's no data. And Liverpool to Liverpool is also a blank. Now I, will, I can see from here, looking, when I'm travelling from London to Newcastle, 342 people get on that train and make that journey. From London to Birmingham, 416 people make that journey. And finally, from London to Liverpool, 224 people make that journey from London to Liverpool. OK, and it's the same if I was to go across from London to Newcastle. It's still 342 people. From London to Birmingham, it's 416. And from London to Liverpool, it's 224. Because remember, remember this is a two-way table. So the information we see will be two ways. OK, now I'm travelling from Newcastle to London, as we've already said, it's 342 people. We're going from Newcastle to Birmingham, 176 people are making that journey. And from Newcastle to Liverpool, 304 people make that journey. From Birmingham to London, we already know, is 416 people. From Birmingham to Newcastle, 176 people make the journey. And from Birmingham to Liverpool, 430 people make the journey. Now from Liverpool to London, 224 people make the journey. From London to Newcastle, 304 people make the journey. From Liverpool to Birmingham, 430 people make that journey. So hopefully, from looking at that, we should be able to draw out simple information, even though it's a two-way table and it's a bit different to the tables you had in your work yesterday. So let me just pop this up a minute now. I'm going to try to move it so you can still hopefully see it. And then we'll look at some questions, because today what you're going to do is you're going to do some questions based on the table like this, a two-way table. OK, now... The first question is going to be a, a, like a retrieval question. It's an, it's an easy, simple question. And it's asking me, how many people travelled from Liverpool to Newcastle? OK, now I could do this very easily because it's just a retrieval thing. It's like we were doing on the Monday's lesson. So I go to Liverpool, I go across until I get to Newcastle. And I can see that it is 304. Now, when you're doing your work today and your online quiz that we've set you questions like this, you won't need to write people or anything extra. You will just need to write your answer 304, OK? Because if you write people, you're going to get it wrong. And then you'll be messaging me and Miss Level and going, oh, because I put this, because you just need to put the, the total, the number, the extraction from the table to your answer, OK? Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit tr trickier. We're going to expand it a little bit today. Now, I'm just trying to figure out, hold on, a way that we might. So now, this question number two says, how many more people travelled from Birmingham to Liverpool than from Birmingham to London. So this now is doing a bit of a comparison, which is where we're going to expand today's learning to. 
okay? And you need to be able to do this. You need to be able to compare things on a table. So from Birmingham to Liverpool, if I look back, I know that it's not the best for seen, but I'm, I'm, you can hear me verbally talking about the data and what's there. So from Birmingham to Liverpool, 430 people make that journey, okay? So that's 430 people make that journey from Birmingham to Liverpool, okay? If I'm going to... Let me, just have a, let me just play around with this a little bit so you can hopefully see my working out while I'm talking it through because this will help you today because we're going to be looking at the table but then we're going to be doing some uh, work where you having to do some comparing like this. Now, I'm also looking for Birmingham to London. Now, Birmingham to London, I know, is 416. So from Birmingham to Liverpool, I've got 430 people that are going to make that journey. And from Birmingham to London, I have 416 people that are making that journey. OK, now remember the question, the key word in the question was how many more? So that means I need to work out the difference from the 430 and the 416, which means I'm going to have to pop, do some subtraction. OK, so if I just get my handy ruler, because you know what me and Miss Lovell are like for presentation. OK, now I know the two numbers. Now I'm going to do my maths and get me an answer. Can I take six from zero? Think. No, I can't. So I'm going to have to exchange. So I would cross out my three and put two and put my one that I've exchanged now over there. Six from ten is going to give me four. Then I've got one and now I haven't got three now, 30. I've only got two, 20 because I've got exchange one. So one from two is going to give me one. And four from four is going to give me zero. So my answer of how many more people travelled from Birmingham to Liverpool than from Birmingham to London is actually 14 people. That means 14 more people chose to travel to Liverpool than they do to London. OK, so hopefully that was easy enough for us to understand. OK, because it's a nice short little one. So that's. That's us answering questions with our two blade tables. Now, bear with me. I'm going to get another table and another set of questions because you're going to look at two types of thing, two types of graphs tables today. Sorry, and the two types of tables is what's going to focus what your work's going to focus on today. Now, this one, this table. Hopefully, we can see that one a bit better if I move you in. This table is a, a bus stop table, okay? Now, the bus station, so the first row of information here is the time that the bus arrives at the bus station and leaves the bus station. And then it stops at four different stops on its journey until it finishes. So the first, bu the first bus leaves the bus station at 9.05. The second bus leaves at 9.15. The third leaves at 9.25 and the fourth leaves at 9.35. Now the bus one that leaves at 9.05 arrives at stop A at 9.15. It arrives at stop B at 9.20. It arrives at stop C at 9.30, and it finally arrives at stop D at 9.33. The bus that leaves at 9.15 arrives at stop A at 9.20, stop B at 9.30, stop C at 9.40 and stop D at 9.50. Now the third bus that's leaving at 9.25 arrives at 9.20, at stop A, sorry, at 9.30, at stop B at 9.35, stop C at 9.40 and stop D at 9.45. And the final bus that was leaving the station at 9.35, the arrives at stop A at 9.45, stop B at 9.55, Stop C at 10.05 and stop D at 11.15. So this is now us looking at a table, but also looking at time. So my first 
question, which is pretty easy, says, if I catch the bus at 9.15, what time will I arrive at stop C? So again, this is a quick retrieve. We're just making sure we can look at the table, interpret it, understand it, and find a simple answer. Now, bus C, well, the bus 9.15 was my second bus. So I'm looking at my data here in the second column, okay? Now, I need to know what time, if I get on that 9.15 bus, what time I'm going to arrive at stop C. So I'm at 9.15, A, B, C. What time will I arrive? I will arrive at that stop C at 9.40. Now, when you're doing work today on the quiz, if you're doing things with questions with time, and there are a couple of questions with time, you need to make sure you put the time exactly the way it is on the table. Don't add 0940. Don't make sure you include the two dots. You have to copy the data exactly as it is from the table. You can't change the data because some of us did that on Monday's work. Work, and then you were putting comments in the classroom to me, Miss Level, saying, I got it wrong because I put this. You got it wrong because you haven't used the exact data. So it's important that you use the exact data, the way it is on the table when you're working with a table. So make sure you remember that before you do your work today. Okay. Now for question two. Sarah has an appointment at 9.45. So she's got to be at her meet, um, appointment here at 9.45 for her to be on time. It says what buses, that tells us pu that, that's um, pu uh, pupil at the end, telling us that there's more than one option for the answer. What buses should she catch to get there on time? So I know that Sarah's got to be there at 9.45 and there are... A a number of possible options that she can have to get to the bus. So if I look at the buses, I know the one at 9.05 goes to stop A at 9.15, 9.20 for stop B, 9.30 for stop C, stop D, 9.33. That tells me Sarah could definitely get on the 9.05 bus and she would be on time because her bus... Uh, meeting is at 9.45. Fantastic. I look at the 9.15 bus. It gets to stop A at 9.20. It gets to stop B at 9.30. And it gets to stop C at 9.40. And it gets to stop D at 9.50. So I know that stop D is no good, but I know that she could use the 9.15 bus if she was getting off before stop C, and she would be on time. So I could also use that one. She could get on that bus as well. Now the next bus we had was 9.25, and it stops at stop A at 9.30, stop B at 9.35, stop C at 9.40, and stop D at 9.45. Now, we know her meeting is at 9.45, so again, if we assume that she is gonna get off before stop D, she could get the 9.25 bus. And if she got off at 9, at stop C, she'd get the 9.40. She'd have five minutes to get to her appointment on time. So again, she could also use the 9.25 bus. Now, the 9.35 bus arrives at stop A at 9.45. Then it's at stop B at 9.55. Then it stops C at 10.05, stop D at 10.15. Is that bus, the 9.35 bus, going to get to her appointment on time? No. So in answer to our question of what buses can Sarah take to get to her appointment, she can take the 9.05 bus, she can take the 9.15 bus, and she can also take the 925 bus. Now I'm just going to give you a little point here about when you are writing your answers like this on the quiz. 
obviously this is a list so you may want to put a, a comma in the list well a comma in the list because it's a list of three things you may want to just write them out as 9.05 leave a space 9.15 space 9.25 done okay that's two ways you can enter your answers for today's work. If you enter them in any other way that is not with a comma between or a space between, then your question answer is going to be wrong on the quiz. OK, so make sure you're thinking about that when you are entering answers to questions like this. Now, for this bus timetable, we have just a couple of more questions. Ooh about this. Now, this is another thing you're going to learn to do today is to do, I'm going to have my coffee in my house, but my house folks know that, uh, is to compare the time of the bus now, okay? Now, number three is asking me, if I get on the bus at, at 9.05, how long does it take me to get from stop B to stop D? So let me get my table back up again. Now I'm getting on the bus at stop, uh, sorry, I'm getting on the bus at 9.05. So that's my bus I'm looking at, I'm looking at my 9.05. I'm also looking at stop B and stop D. Now stop B, it arrives at 9.20. For stop D, it's, um, I'm arriving at 9.33. Now some of us may find that really easy, quick maths, they can work out that straight away from 9.33 to 9.20, it's 30 minutes. OK, some of us, we may need to do some maths with it. That's absolutely fine. So some of you, you might want to go from 9.20 um, and count your way from 9.20 to 9.33. So 9.20, 9.21, 22, 23. So counting that way and you'll get your answer of 30 minutes. I'm on that bus from stop D, uh, stop B, sorry, to stop D for 13 minutes, okay? That's an, I think, for me, that's an easy question, and I know that everyone in year five, both Hasbro and Treehouse, can answer a question like that easily, okay? Because it's just looking at uh, the, the data we have and understanding it and making sure we get from A to B so to speak right now this question is where we may struggle if we struggle with time however it's easy and we can all do it if we do some math in our heads even though we might have problems with time so it says i get the bus at 9 35 how long does it take me to get to stop d so my bus here Ooh. at 9.35 is the start of my journey, okay? I arrive at stop D at 10.05. So I get on the bus at 9.35, and I'm arriving at 10.15, okay? Think back to how many minutes are in an hour. We know that that's 60. That's knowledge that we get down in year three, year four. We know that, okay? I've got 9.35 here. This is the way I would approach this question. 9.35. I know if I add five more to that, I get 9.40. So I've added five, I've now got 40. I use my knowledge of my tens, and I can go 40, 50, 60. I've added 20. And that will take me to 10 o'clock. So I've added so far 25 minutes, okay? And I know that I ended it at 10.15. So actually what I've got now is another 15. So I know that I've got 25 minutes and a 15 minutes. Well, five out of five is 10. So put my little zero, put my one. Two and one is three, add the one is 40. So how long does it take for me to get from the bus station to stop D? Well, it's 40 minutes, okay? So we, I know that we can all count in tens, and I know that we can count in fives. 
So I feel confident that we should be able to access this today and we should be able to do it. Again, let me just give you a piece of advice when you're entering question that answers like this. You do not need to write the word minutes after I have you've worked it out. So for example, I here now have worked out that to get the 9.35 bus to get to stop D, it's taking me 40 minutes. So in, in my quiz, I would just enter 40. I'm not writing the word minutes at the end. You don't need to write the word minutes. You just need to put the number, the figure. Um, but I feel confident, and you should feel confident, that we can all do this. We can all achieve this. We can easily access a table. And this is our last lesson on tables today. But I know from looking at the work yesterday, and also Miss Lovell, um, that you succeeded yesterday, and I'm sure you shall, you will exceed today. So now you've watched this video, it's time for you to complete the quiz uh, on the Google Classrooms, and best of luck.